Uh, the business uh, network LinkedIn is becoming more and more uh, important in, in Germany as well. And of, uh, of course, it plays an important role in international uh, research. And uh, Irina will share with us today some methods and hacks on how to search uh, LinkedIn effectively. Uh, thanks for giving us such a great final, Irina, to our June, in, in, in our June webinars. Uh, and uh, yeah, the stage is yours. All right, let, thank you so much and thank you for having me. Let me share my screen. Do you see my screen now? Not yet? Not yet. Okay. Uh, here. Yes. Yes? That's good. Cool. Yes, we, we see it, thank you. All right, so um, I'm happy to take your questions. Um, uh, as I present. And uh, just give me one second, okay? Do you have a bird? Yeah, yeah, I live above a park. We have birds, we have uh, uh, deer, you know? Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, even coyotes. Look, look. All right like a good um, contrast to what you're working on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's still pretty close to San Francisco. <laughs> so, all right. So let's talk about LinkedIn. And my promise was to tell you about LinkedIn operators and I'll tell you uh, about them, but uh, they have stopped working on Wednesday, but I have other stuff to share with you. My name is Irina Shemaiva. I write a blog, Boolean Strings. You can read my bio there. I'm Brain Gain on Twitter. And of course, I'm on, with link, on LinkedIn and pretty well connected. A little bit about my work. Um, I used to be a software engineer uh, ages ago. Uh, then I became a recruiter. And uh, the search that we do is uh, the search that's um, necessary in recruiting. It's called sourcing. When we're looking for people with particular qualities, professional background, of course, their contact information as well. Uh, and we do research figuring out where those people might be. So we Google a lot, we are on LinkedIn all the time and do other stuff. Sourcing certification is uh, our training uh, mainly for recruiters, but not just on LinkedIn, Google, uh, so forth. Social list is a tool we've built and Boolean strings is my blog. So today's outline, we'll talk about a bunch of things all around how to find uh, information on LinkedIn. So um, this is a screenshot of uh, showing you LinkedIn uh, statistics. Now, if you compare these numbers with the uh, numbers of people in particular countries, it, it really does not mean that say half of the United States population is on LinkedIn. Why? Because there, there is tons of uh, you know, duplicate profiles, uh, fake profiles and so forth. And it's even worth with worse with uh, company employees. If you look at IBM employees, LinkedIn has more IBM employees than IBM itself. Amazon has twice as many, and I'll shed some life, uh, light on why and how this happens. Uh, just want to open the chat so I have it. So as I present, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions or comments, but please in English, I don't speak. Uh, German. So uh, uh, LinkedIn, net, LinkedIn is a network and uh, we, are connect, we have first level connections, there are connections of, uh, second, and then there are third, and there are group members. Uh, people outside of our networks, when we search for them, are displayed as LinkedIn members, and if you press on it, nothing happens. Uh, so uh, one suggestion is to build your network so that you see more people, obviously. And then uh, Google has public LinkedIn profiles and it's ridiculous how LinkedIn wouldn't show us profiles, but Google would. So to find the profile on Google, you copy what you see visible and your search keywords, what you search by, uh, plug it into Google and, and uh, here you go, you'll find uh, the full profile. Uh, 
some profiles are not public, but it's it's very, very rare. 99.9 .9 and so forth percent are public and found by Google. So uh, a suggestion if you are not active on LinkedIn, but you do want to search there, connect with people who have lots of connections. Uh, somebody, uh, a genius, like uh, when we heard about those limitations initially, there was a genius who invited LinkedIn Open Networks. They, these people accept all invitations. So you search by line, connect with them. You'll, you'll have a, a good size of LinkedIn visible to you just overnight. So uh, how do we search on LinkedIn? There are Boolean fields, several of them in uh, linkedin.com. There are keywords, first, last name, title, company, and school. So uh, the Boolean uh, search here, uh, we can be using and, or, and not, and is implied, or must be capitalized, put parentheses around or statement, not must be capitalized, and phrases go in the quotation marks. So these are the rules. Though, as we'll uh, very soon see, LinkedIn does not exactly follow these rules. So why, uh, 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 why uh, Boolean is that important on LinkedIn? These fields that allow Boolean search uh, really give us power. Why? Because um, unlike Google, LinkedIn does not come up with um, uh, suggestions. If you search on Google, you search, say, for uh, software engineer, you will find developers, programmers, and coders. And LinkedIn is pretty bad about that. It tries to find something similar, but it fails. So it's best to go and search for everything uh, you may uh, expect to find. Same if I'm searching for developer, I can be doing this. I can be searching for abbreviations. I can be even searching for misspellings. And the more I add to uh, variations that mean the same, or can mean the same, the more results I'll find. And then uh, quite often uh, we'd have to do a list of uh, search by a list of schools or a list of companies. And those are also OR statements. Now the rest of the LinkedIn search dialog is selections and selections are OR. So if you select two schools or two companies, it will be this or that, this or that. Uh, I'll go through uh, several slides explaining how fields work, specific fields. So if, if you're searching by first or last name, a LinkedIn decides that you do know that person. And even if the person is outside of your network, they may have no connections, be in nobody's network, results will be visible. What this means for us is that we can be searching say in the last name, of course we can be searching for somebody by name, but we can also be searching in the last name. A lot of people have some sort of certifications. CPA is an accountant, RN is a registered nurse. We could be searching like that. And then all the results are visible, say an out of network result, a person with uh, very few connections will be visible fully. Uh, LinkedIn plays with uh, names. Uh, it has its hierarchy and uh, there is no way to defeat it. If you search for Geraldine, for example, as the first name, uh, they will find Jerry, Jerry, and so forth. Uh, if you search for Maria, it will find Mariana. Uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot turn it off. On Google, uh, you can be uh, searching verbatim, if you know. You can, uh, type your string and say, do not interpret it in any way. LinkedIn, even uh, quotation marks around a single word do uh, absolutely nothing. Now, um, some members display only the last name initial. If you search by their last name, they will al al also be found. And then people uh, who do this quite often forget to remove their last name from the URLs, which I find quite often looking for candidates for our jobs. Oh, and also, um, if you search for last uh, in the last name field, it will find people by former last name, which may not be displayed. And some people in, in the uh, last name put their full uh, former last name. Say, I don't know, Irina Shamaiva would be full last name in the last name field. So they, they can be found this way, can be found this way. 
All right, so uh, locations. A few years ago, locations were our pain uh, because it uh, only had big areas, especially where I live, San Francisco Bay Area is huge. Uh, and we couldn't uh, search officially by uh, better locations. Then they switched to Bing, to Bing locations, which are pretty um, granular. And when you're searching for locations, you can be searching by a, a, a location name that will uh, pop up here as soon as you start typing. And some people show that location name on their profile. Some people prefer to say the area, but all of the results will be here in, in my town. Um, profile languages is a nice filter if you're searching for people who may know a language or people who have moved from one uh, country to another. Now, when you start looking here for the profile language, it only shows you five choices. What if you want to choose another language or uh, a lot of languages? Uh, for that, you can uh, switch to that country that uh, speaks the language, then select the language, and then you can drop the country and see, uh, search for people who speak Dutch uh, elsewhere in a in different country, uh, not, not, who have Dutch profiles, okay? How is it going? Any questions so far? And, and let me know, is it familiar? Is it new? Is it interesting? I, I'd, be, I'd be happy to hear your feedback because this audience is somewhat unusual to me but I'm happy to be here, of course. So um, uh, another way uh, to find people who uh, have relocated is uh, searching by school. Uh, one way to do it is uh, to go, oh, good, thank you. The more feedback, the merrier, and I accept, I'm happy to answer questions as well. So, um, Okay, I have a question. How is it possible to for find former employees of a certain company? I'll respond to that. Let me go through some search uh, fields that I have in the slides, okay? So um, uh, searching in the school field is good uh, to find people who have relocated. One thing you can do is you can collect names of uh, uh, colleges, universities in a particular co country and uh, put the or string here. Uh, and another thing is uh, we found that just putting the uh, geography, the country name and city names uh, works also very well in Europe. A lot of people uh, not only list their secondary school, but primary as well. And those may have locations in their name. So uh, this search shows you people who live in the UK and went to school in Germany, right? So they've moved. Hidden operators are gone. Um, and uh, Okay, uh, I have a question about the slides. I have uploaded these slides to my speaker profile. I imagine, Gunter, that, uh, that everyone should be able to get them there. There is a PDF file of these slides. Uh, check it out. If you download it now, you can click the links to follow me. Absolutely. You will find it in the, in the program then, yeah. Mm -hmm. So hidden search operators is a uh, theory, uh, uh, but let me tell you about them because they, uh, I, I think they will be back. Uh, a few years ago, LinkedIn uh, posted a blog that they have these operators that you can, can type in the keywords and search for these fields. Uh, these are good. They are repeated in the uh, fields though, in the text fields as we, uh, we've seen. They were uh, these operators and uh, a total of 19 operators that we have discovered just by trying, just by guessing and their codes, they're gone as of Wednesday. <laughs> and uh, um, they might be back. We know that the code is there. It's a pretty old piece of code that just surfaces and all of a sudden powers up our search. So keep an eye on them. I have a list of them on my blog and I have a list of them here Right now, none of them work, um, but they may start working again. So we could, while they were working, we could search for a bunch of good stuff. Um, the reason I know that the code is not gone is, uh, so there is an extensive subscription for recruiters called LinkedIn Recruiter. 
the operators continue to work there. I'm not suggesting that you buy the subscriptions about 10,000 a year, but that proves that the code is there then the operators work. So in LinkedIn Recruiter, we can be searching uh, for headline skill and other things. The code pops up, not in the personal. Otherwise, uh, without the operator, we do, do not even have the headline. Uh, oh, good, there is a link to my slides. So otherwise we cannot search by headline and it's an omission because um, people tell us what they're about in the headline. They're, they tell us they're hiring, they're open for work. They tell us about their accomplishments and just why they didn't provide a search in it. I don't know, not in any paid account either. And uh, the operator skill uh, in recruiter is just searches for cure. So it's a separate thing the, the code is activated there and hopefully it'll be back in our personal accounts as well. Okay. Now LinkedIn, uh, when it searches uh, for people, so it has a database of people and uh, it searches for a bunch of values, but it does not search for uh, some things that are on the profile. Uh, you cannot search for locations of work, even in the keywords. You, you enter keywords, uh, it will not pop up people who used to work there. Recommendations, accomplishments, uh, all of this stuff. You cannot search for somebody who got an award or ha have a publication. And then emojis and accident uh, characters are ignored. And uh, I will show you how to search for all of this good stuff through Google. Now, uh, let's talk about the structure of LinkedIn. When they created it, they thought, okay, if a person has a job, went to school, has past jobs, right? Um, what they did not account for is people who come to LinkedIn and edit their profiles very often forget to close their past jobs. So there is tons of people, especially executives who look like this. Uh, yeah, this person has three current jobs, though in reality, it's clear that they work here and they will be found by any words in the titles. They would be uh, f found as he head of partner, solution director, whatever, in any of those companies. So because of that, uh, the results, uh, the numbers of results are always inflated. And here is a, a, a search for a CEO of any company. You will find tons of them because of unclosed positions. For example, uh, there are 74 CEOs of one company, Agile Technologies, if you search for it. So we have to review results. Nothing, nothing much we can do about it. And the numbers are, of course, high. I mean, Agile Technologies has as many as 74 CEOs. Imagine uh, the number of employees. So, um, if you do research, LinkedIn data is fantastic for research because it's self-entry. Of course, people may lie or forget to update their profiles, but it's pretty unique in the sense that people come in and enter their data. And in Germany, LinkedIn uh, 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 is also complemented uh, uh, for German speakers by Zing, a network that works in a similar way. So, um, if you are assessing some numbers, say, uh, if I search for, um, uh, if I go to the IBM uh, page, IBM company, it shows me 527,000 employees, but in reality is way, way fewer. Limitations. Uh, Boolean is important because we want to express uh, what we are looking for in every way, and those are OR statements. Now, what they tell us is they uh, keep their uh, search engine operating as quickly as possible. It is the truth. What happens in reality, if you're searching for longer than, uh, you know, a, a string with four or five ORs, it shows no results. It turns out. It simply turns out. Uh, and uh, of course, Boolean search has nothing to do with profile scraping. 
you can do profile scraping, but how it's related to the number of ors, it's just a joke. So LinkedIn search returns no results. Obviously, they want to upsell their subscriptions, but they fail even to show us a dialect subscribe to more. They just show no results. If you're sure there must be results, that means that your string is too long. Now, here, here is a hack uh, that LinkedIn uh, does not know about, and I'll tell you. Uh, how to search for longer strings like this. What you need to do is reformat your string. Uh, put every term you have in, in parentheses and remove the spaces after ors. And now all of a sudden you can run uh, much longer strings. And that also applies to and and not. Now and is assumed, but uh, nots will be also uh, restricted. And if you write your uh, string this uh, in this way, uh, it will swallow it, it will, it will work. And here is, um, here is a title search. How many people have uploaded uh, slides? You, you can just try these uh, searches. And this LinkedIn friendly um, uh, formatted string works. Keyword interpretation. Now, LinkedIn is trying to be, uh, to guess our intent, trying to be semantic. It doesn't do it very well at all. Uh, it does it when we enter keywords in the uh, terms in the keywords. So if I go to the keywords and type software developer, not software, not developer, it should, it should return zero results. However, it returns thousands of results. And, uh, what it does in, for in these cases changes all the time, but there is something going on be, behind the scene and, and the expensive subscription is full of interpretation that we have to overcome by searching with Boolean in the uh, relevant fields. So uh, also you, uh, you may notice that if you move keywords around, you will be getting different numbers of results. So this also comes from some interpretation. It also interprets uh, company names on and off. Okay. So if your search includes job title sounding words in a row, such as software engineer, if you put something in the middle here, it'll stop doing that. Uh, no quotation marks, it just picks a piece and decides it's a job title. So what happens, it searches for these jobs uh, for these titles, past and present. And it also includes similar sounding titles. Now, it is sort of a hack to search for a past uh, uh, job title, uh, but if you want to search precisely for the current job title, put it in the title field. Uh, uh, similar sounding titles is uh, uh, the way LinkedIn thinks about them, and they may be somewhat off. It may uh, decide, for example, that um, an executive assistant to, uh, to CEO is the same, uh, a similar sounding title to CEO. Now, I had a question, how to search for past company. Um, uh, was it for past company? I believe we just have this field in the search dialog. Former employees of a certain company. I mean, in the LinkedIn search dialog, you do have a uh, former company selection. So it's, it's not a problem. Now, um, we have company selections and some other selections, uh, and we, we have a field where can, we can enter, say, a company name. So what LinkedIn is trying to do, it, it has a standardized set of companies, schools, other values, which is natural. And in our personal search, it, for example, allows the search to select a company, to select a school, to select a past company. Now, what happens there is LinkedIn standard can only process maybe half or less than half of LinkedIn because people enter whatever they please. And a lot of people have non-standard data on profiles. They would put the company name but not link to the company page or they will unusually spell it out. And if you're searching by selection, you're missing all of those people who did not fit into the LinkedIn structure. 
Now, if you search using Boolean search syntax, it is more inclusive because you will be finding those people, those non-standard people. Uh, company selection versus company name is very different. So if I put company name Amazon, uh, obviously it will find companies with the name containing Amazon. Uh, imagine that it related to Amazon more inclusive. If, if I'm searching for Apple, for the company Apple, I, I will be finding irrelevant companies, but as I narrow down the search, maybe with other parameters, uh, I will find the right results. Now, if I select a company, for example, select a company Amazon, it may find other companies related to Amazon, maybe even not containing the word Amazon in the name, but the, uh, LinkedIn is very weak in that. Uh, LinkedIn, for major companies like Amazon, Apple, and so forth, it does not find the companies that are associated. So if you're truly searching for anyone who works at Amazon, you will be searching for the word Amazon, and then you'll find the companies acquired that may not have that in the name and include them as well. So take control over that. So here is a, an, exa uh, an example screenshot that shows uh, the discrepancy. So 45K plus members have entered the word IBM, but did not point to the company IBM. They will not be found if you're searching by a company selection. Does make sense? Okay, any more questions about people search in LinkedIn? Please use the chat for questions and type them in English or feedback or tell me you know a doll or something. All right, company search. Um, we're lucky to have company search back. It was out for some years. Uh, we can be searching by locations, industry, and company size. And the locations for companies have a better uh, selection than uh, uh, locations for people search. We can be searching in large areas like EMEA could be useful for us in recruiting, probably could be useful for you. Uh, now, company size. So uh, company size on LinkedIn, you know how it's calculated? It's calculated by the number of people who uh, uh, point to that company. <laughs> so it, it could be in the same ballpark, but the numbers uh, uh, are not real numbers. And look at this. I have selected all the sizes of the companies and uh, all the companies is about 60 million and companies with sizes is about 30 million. Uh, this is a glimpse uh, into how LinkedIn struggles to interpret data. So half of the companies that are sitting in the company pages, LinkedIn doesn't even know about their sizes. And there is a, a fun link that shows you uh, your connection company. So you can select region, industry, and then it shows you the numbers of connections, just for fun. The next thing I want to talk about, I think it's very powerful and it's not something hidden or poorly, poorly documented on LinkedIn, if at all, uh, but it's, it's a very powerful thing. So uh, I'll show you how to uh, find people from a list of email addresses. You don't have to have anything except this list of email addresses. Uh, and you will find all, the, all these people on LinkedIn if they're registered by these addresses. Why this can be uh, useful? First, if you're searching, uh, there are multiple Chrome tools that find contact information that we use in our practice. Say, if I look through profiles, uh, find those emails, I want to verify them. Uh, you have a database, you can update where everybody is. Uh, you can Google for lists. Um, um, there are tons of lists of people who attended events, uh, who belong to an association and so forth. Uh, or for us technical recruiters, if we go on GitHub and search for a location programming language, I can collect those emails and then find those software engineers on LinkedIn. Uh, another application is I, I'm looking at a profile, I don't know the email, and I can guess. I, I can. Uh, 
per, there are email permutators. I can upload that list and see which one is correct. And then when you're uploading uh, lists uh, to LinkedIn, it allows you to invite them. Of course, you shouldn't be inviting random people, but if you're uploading a list of people who, with whom you want to uh, interact, you can invite them right from there and it has no limitations uh, compared to LinkedIn that has introduced a limit of 100 per week, which may not seem like a, a big deal to you, but um, people who are using LinkedIn for business are pretty pissed off because of that. So here is how you do that. Anybody knows how to do that, by the way? All right. So uh, you go to this uh, page uh, where uh, you might have some imported data. Uh, you don't need any imported data. It may have gotten there from some integration uh, with Gmail, whatever. You just remove it. You don't need it. You have it elsewhere. So I remove it. And now my uploaded data is uh, empty. And I'm talking about a free account or business account. So uh, then I create a CSV file. The first and last names don't matter. I put Jim Smith or something. And then I put these emails, uh, emails that I want to verify in the third column. Go to the screen, press this, upload a file, upload this uh, CSV file. What happens right away is I'm, it shows me people uh, from that list who were identified from that list with whom I'm not connected. And this screen is where I can connect with them if I want it or just skip it. So I started with a list of emails, uh, not knowing something about it, them, but not much, found all these people on LinkedIn. And then if I go to saved contacts, it will list um, uh, all the identified profiles, including the first connections. These searches don't work, uh, but I will see uh, a whole uh, list. Now, the Smith uh, profile, it's, it's, a prof it's not really a profile. It is a, an entry for an, an email that was not identified because I put Jason Smith in the upload file, right? Now you have this list. And in fact, as soon as you click on anybody's name, their email shows up, okay? So now I have identified which email belongs to whom. I don't know an out of the box tool to create a list, but those of you who can write uh, or run scrapers, uh, it's not a problem to collect a full list of uh, profiles with names, uh, titles, companies, uh, emails. So now you have, it, it's sort of, uh, you know how we call enriching if you have a list of profiles and uh, they are appended with contact information. This is sort of anti-enriching going backwards, starting with the mails and then finding these people. Uh, now, I, I, the screen I was showing had about 30, but in fact, you can upload huge lists. I was able to upload uh, eight, nine K emails. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work, repeat it. Uh, and it, it, you can verify a huge list in one shot. Now the paid account LinkedIn recruiter allows to cross-reference 200 um, at a time. Remove contacts be, be, before each upload. I believe the total uh, number of contacts uh, it, it, it tops at 10 K. You don't need them, remove and upload your new lists. How is it going, folks? Let me know in the chat. Is it making sense? Is it useful? Do you have any questions? Great stuff. Oh, all right. Please tell me that because <laughs> I, uh, I'm, uh, it's it's really good to have. Um, it's good to have feedback. What are the contacts? Here are the contacts. Do you see my uh, screen, right? So here are the contacts. Here is where you can add more contacts. This is where you upload a file. And if, if we have uh, time at the end, I just can do it live, but let me finish with the slides first, right? So um, 
Use case, uh, guess and verify email. Now I have a Jason Smith who works at Amazon. I have no idea what his email is. And I'm coming up with some suggestions. Uh, then uh, when I upload this file, it, it will find the right email for the uh, profile in question. Uh, the internet is full of our Excel lists. So I was working with pharma research uh, uh, company was looking for coordinators and members. Here's one of tons of those lists that have contact information. All I need here is the emails. I upload them. Here they are. Here are my research managers. I can connect with them. And then in the contacts page, uh, uh, in the contact page, uh, I will find them all. I see a question, I'll, I'll get back to you. Okay, uh, GitHub. So on GitHub, I can search for software engineers by language and location. Um, these are GitHub operators. When I search for them, uh, I uh, get a list. I can collect email addresses, upload to LinkedIn, find those people. So about these people, I already know that they write in PHP. They may not even have told me that they uh, write in PHP on LinkedIn. So this, this is um, uh, cross-referencing information. Okay, so uh, that was about LinkedIn search. I'll, I'll talk uh, about more stuff. I have a question about a job search. Um, I can talk about job search, uh, uh, of course. Uh, it shouldn't be difficult on LinkedIn. And of course you should be looking for jobs elsewhere as well. Uh, in, uh, I am I, happy to connect with you and take a look at your searches or suggest some searches. And if you're looking for a job, uh, make sure that your LinkedIn profile speaks about you. All right, um, you, you will have the slides. I don't know if uh, the video will be shared. You will have the slides. So uh, if you're looking for a job, make sure your LinkedIn profile tells your story. Uh, don't push too many keywords into it. It needs to tell a story uh, like who you are. Maybe in the summary, the, the last couple jobs, uh, make sure that your job title and company is standardized. Point to your company on LinkedIn. Do not write anything weird in the job title because LinkedIn is good at searching for standard. Makes sense? All right. Messaging. So email on LinkedIn costs money. Uh, and uh, it's, it's bizarre that LinkedIn does, uh, you know, collects everybody into a business network and then charges for people to message each other. But uh, there is still a bunch of uh, uh, members whom you can uh, message for free. First connections, group members, people who are attending an event, and anyone with this yellow in uh, 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 sign who have a premium account, they, they can say any message to me is free. Then you can be inviting people, you can be interacting, and of course you can email, call, text, go to Messenger, and so forth. So group members and people who are attending an event if we join groups and events, it uh, uh, makes the number of people we can reach out to message uh, higher, larger. Here is a URL hack uh, on how to find group uh, members. When you search, you, you can be searching by your uh, contacts. First, second, and third level. There is no search by groups. And then the URL looks like this. Now. Uh, I have figured out that if uh, that the letter A means groups and it works. So you can do any search, select say your first contact or second, and then replace this letter by A, you will be searching in the groups. So here is an example URL. We're searching for people at some current company, some location, and here I'm putting F and A, which means first connections and group members and in theory, I can message these people for free. Okay. 
Now, if I do want to send that free message, it takes a few clicks because it won't show you that you can send a message from the search results. So you have to go to the group, find the person and uh, send them a message. There used to be a monthly limit for messages in groups. Now it's unlimited. Okay, so that was LinkedIn within LinkedIn. And now I'm going to talk about searching uh, LinkedIn from Google. Um, so on Google, uh, we can use the operator site, which recruiters call X-ray. I think it's spelling beyond um, uh, recruiter circles. I'll be using the X-ray term, which means the operator site. It may be Bing, but we're using Google. Okay. So uh, site LinkedIn.com slash in. Why slash in? Because all of the LinkedIn profiles are have that type of URL. You can be searching for company and position in the titles of the page. And then you can add keywords. So here is an example, uh, site linkedin.com entitled chief financial officer. These are the people with the title. And by the way, uh, we're not suffering here from the past unclosed positions because the, la the real position, the current position is in the title. And here entitled Facebook people who work at Facebook. Now, when you're looking at the results, um, I see some people are not even on LinkedIn uh, in the audience. Um, but if you are on, on LinkedIn, you still may want to uh, view profiles in incognito uh, for your research, what they look like, decide how to better search for them and so forth. So Google mobile friendly test uh, shows you result. Uh, LinkedIn, may show you a couple profiles in incognito and then it forces you to start logging in. Here you can be using this without any uh, knowledge by LinkedIn that you're doing it. And uh, uh, it's not mobile friendly test. It is a way to see the profile in incognito. Another way to see uh, a profile, at least uh, a good part of it, uh, uh, if you go to Outlook Online, paste somebody's LinkedIn URL, you will see that preview again without touching LinkedIn. Question, is there a tool extension that can re reveal contact details that are otherwise hidden if one is not connected? Yes, absolutely. There are lots of these tools. If you, if you ever go to Facebook uh, groups where recruiters hang out, it's like, once a week, somebody would uh, always ask like, what is the best tool? Uh, and um, I can name several tools. We use some tools. Uh, th there is a whole lot of them. Uh, Numeria, RocketReach, SalesQL, Contact Out, and so forth. They all have their separate databases and of course, uh, they, they all give you a little bit of trial and then they start charging about 40 cents per contact. Uh, I thought you can turn off that someone whose profile uh, sees that you have, yeah. You can uh, make your settings so that people don't see when you visit their profiles. Still, you may want to see their public profiles. And of course, you don't need to go to LinkedIn for that. Uh, and also uh, LinkedIn, if, you, if you're looking at too many profiles, uh, if you're looking at too many profiles, it, uh, it may suspend you. Uh, my colleagues who overdo that or use some automation uh, get suspended. It's, they're not uh, being kicked off of LinkedIn, but you may lose your access for a day or two. Well, if you're looking in incognito, LinkedIn has no idea. Okay. So, um, finding people by country. Uh, a nice way to do that is to go to Google's advanced search dialog and select a region. You can also select a language here. Uh, if you select a region, uh, the URL gets this addition, see our country. And then when I search, without me doing anything uh, specific, 
I, I just switched to the location, uh, Belgium in this case, uh, in the advanced dialogue, do not do anything in the search and the results are all from Belgium. And then an alternative way is to use a two letter country abbreviation. Um, when you're using the two letter country abbreviation, it may miss some profiles because it, it's a little crazy. LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn's profiles are mostly indexed by the two letter country abbreviation, but some will be indexed by www here. So this is a good way to find people may miss some results. Uh, this does not work for the US. Profiles under US LinkedIn.com, so, some exist, but there are few. And the majority of profiles under are under www. So if you are searching in the US, relocating yourself, maybe changing your IP address too, uh, helps a lot. Accented characters, LinkedIn ignores them. Uh, uh, and, and on Google, you can search for the put them put words in the quotation marks so that Google wouldn't interpret them, and you can see that it finds the right stuff while LinkedIn wouldn't. Uh, X-ray for emojis. Uh, well, it's not necessarily X-ray. Google does search for emojis like uh, an envelope. So on Google, we can be searching for uh, emojis and finding pages that have them, and of course, envelope. Uh, points to contact information. So here's my search. I'm searching for profiles. And here I'm putting envelope followed by oracle.com. The asterisk means a word, a couple words on Google. So this will find me a phrase, quote unquote, starting with an envelope and ending with Oracle, which of course uh, will point to contact information. So here I'm getting contact information in the results. There are lo lots of emojis that you could be using. Uh, these are email emojis, phone emojis, country flags. Uh, if somebody moves from one country to another, they often would put their flag where they're from to identify themselves. So you can look for people who move this way, a lot of some country, I suppose. LGBTQ people use their emojis. You can be searching by rainbow and so forth. And, and these are underlined their links that you can reproduce. Anyone wants to see a result? For example, searching for um, LGBTQ people. Here is what it looks like. Here are all, all of these emojis found. And of course, you cannot find them otherwise. OK. Um, um, you can be x-ray using the operator site and at the same time searching by image. So if I have a, some sort of a certification image or somebody belongs to an organization that is on the profile, you can uh, drag, oh, sorry, you can drag this um, image into the image search and then type your x-ray string. And this way I'm finding people who are the certified that's this way, right? How do you find certification images or any images that you want to search by? It could be certifications, organizations, patents, so forth. Uh, for certifications, I would search like this. I'm searching in images uh, and I've added certified and naturally chose me those images I can search for by. So I can just drag this image into the search box, retype, linkedin.com uh, slash in and find people with that stuff. You will also find uh, by uh, shared image. If you look at the public profile, it has a little bit of activity. So if people were sharing something uh, on LinkedIn, th that would be find, found too. Uh, next thing I want to talk about briefly because we are at the end of our time and it's the end of your day, uh, custom search engines. Um, we have a book that was just printed. It's one of uh, the favorite subjects. Um, they, they have been renamed to programmable uh, search engines, but we love uh, custom search engines, CSEs. is a software layer on top of Google. They're not really search engines. They search also in Google's index. And um, 
they, you know, and first step to understand what they're about is uh, they can hide complexity. You can, or uh, from somebody who doesn't want to type operator, if it's, uh, just not to repeat this stuff over and over again. So this can be put in. But custom search engines ha are very powerful in less known ways. Uh, so this link ta takes you to a custom search engine uh, where you can be entering any words and it has um, hidden uh, the operator site. But you will be just seeing people from LinkedIn. But uh, custom search engine also allow operators uh, beyond site, beyond entire. They have very special operators that can look for specific values on the page. Uh, it depends on the site. For LinkedIn, it used to be better, but we still can be searching by headlines with custom search engines. And now, uh, please, uh, um, <laughs> it, it does look complex. Uh, it has nothing to do with Twitter. It is how this operator is written out. It has to be read, read, written out this way. Uh, so uh, talk to me, uh, get our book, uh, or come to another webinar. It's pretty interesting. So custom search engines have these uh, complex operators that can precisely find something in, in particular structure. For LinkedIn, it's headlines. So this string on a custom search engine will find the word hiring not anywhere but in the headline. Uh, an asterisk in these operators means and, an and operator. It's a different sort of asterisk. So this search will find people who are open to work. Tell us that in their headline. So the asterisk stands for and in this syntax. Okay, so I am at the end of my slides. Uh, come read my blog, Boolean Strings. A lot of, I, I, I share a lot of uh, stuff that I discover. Sourcing webinars is where we present uh, this information, you know, in a fully cover, covering some topics. Um, Socialist.io is our tool that is based on custom search engines. It, it does use those filtered uh, ways to search in custom search engine and hides the hides it uh, and uh, behind the scenes so you can be searching for some filters and it has not only LinkedIn it has some other sites including Zing by the way this book uh, custom search engine discover more is uh, my first real book we have some PDF books uh, print, uh, printed in the UK if you get it please get an electronic version so that you can uh, click the links. And I have a Facebook, we have a Facebook Boolean Strings group with about 7,000 people. If, if you join, you can be asking questions or sharing something. So I'm happy to answer a few more questions and thanks a lot for listening. Thank you for this powerful insights into investigating uh, in the uh, LinkedIn network. Uh, are there any more questions via the text chat or you can also raise your hand or just uh, turn on your microphone and ask a question if you, if you have some power left? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I'm happy uh, to hear from you after. Cool, um, yeah, um, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Irina. Thank you so much. And uh, we would be very happy to learn more about online research, research from you in the future. Once again, thanks. And I uh, hope to see you again soon and possibly uh, in Germany one time if uh, traveling and uh, having- I have been contact. to Germany. In fact, I had a ticket to Germany when COVID struck. Uh, oh. So I didn't go. I was going to a conference in Germany. Mm -hmm. And I'm somewhat used to the conference being mostly in German, <laughs> but people mm -hmm. understanding English very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hope we will we will be back. And uh, I'm I'm switching to German uh, to say goodbye to everyone. Danke Thank euch you. und Ihnen fürs dabei sein heute. Wir hoffen sehr, dass wir also im, im Herbst äh, zu einer Präsenztagung einladen können äh, am 1. und 2. Oktober. Wenn es keine Präsenztagung wird, es wird auf jeden Fall eine äh, Tagung werden und ähm, also es soll auf jeden Fall online auch wieder was stattfinden, falls in Präsenz nichts stattfinden kann. Aber wir hoffen sehr und Kuno hat es vorhin ja schon gesagt, der 
ähm, äh, Karl Lauterbach hat uns ja Hoffnungen gemacht, dass das, dass das durchaus klappen könnte. Ähm, vorhin kam eine kurze Nachfrage nach Mitschnitten. Wir werden äh, vielleicht einzelne Mitschnitte nach Absprache mit den Referentinnen veröffentlichen. Wir ähm, verzichten bewusst darauf, das vorher zu klären, weil wir äh, uns immer eine offene Gesprächsatmosphäre erhoffen. Und ähm, ja, insofern äh, wollen wir lieber hinterher nochmal mit den Referentinnen reden, ob, äh, ob sie damit einverstanden sind. Vielen Dank äh, auch an meine Kollegen. Danke an Franziska, die heute den Textchat mit ganz vielen Infos gefüttert hat. Und ja, jetzt euch allen äh, äh, einen schönen Abend noch und bleibt gesund weiterhin. Und ja, ich hoffe, wir sehen uns bald. Tschüss. Vielen Dank. Danke.